Be strong. What does it mean to be strong when the heart aches and there is no hope in sight? When holding back tears no longer helps? When the road is rough and it weighs you down? How do we stay strong? Stay strong in community because there is a better life in needing others. Though our lives may not be perfect, and we can't promise you there will be days without the dark clouds, but we can promise to be there when it rains and when it hurts. We will be there with you when all seems bleak. We will guide you to wholeness. We are living your dreams. Once your division of marriage is wrong, or the vision of family is wrong, your practice will be wrong. So we're talking about we are family. So for a subtitle, healthy habits for healthy family, for a subtopic, healthy habits for healthy family. So in order to build strong marriages, some unhealthy behaviors must be taken out if we're gonna build strong marriages. Now, let me tell you something about society. Look at our society today. If you don't like society, if you don't like where society is, that's how our marriages are. The smallest unit of the society is the family. Once we get the family right, we get the society right. Today we have the speaker, we have the deputy speaker. They came from family. They didn't jump down from a tree. It was a mother and a father that raised them. So whatever it is, whatever process that was put in place, when they are now serving in the public office, is the same thing you're going to have. All right? You, when you become a governor, wh whoever you are, when you were, before you become a governor, is what is actually going to play out in society. If you're a very self-centered person and they say you're a governor, it's, it, you don't get into the office and then you change. Who you are is what you bring in. Same with marriage, same with, same with family. If we're going to have a healthy society, friends, we're going to have healthy marriage, we're going to have healthy people becoming mothers and fathers. When we have people with damaged emotions, damaged memories, becoming mothers and fathers, the society becomes a very difficult place to stay. So there are behaviors that we must take out of our lives if things are going to work. There is a, a chart I gave you two weeks back. Relationship, behavior, emotions, thinking, and core values. Your core values determine your mindset. The way you think is a function of your four, four, four core values. If we can change the core values, we can change the thinking. If we can change the thinking, we can change the emotions. If we can change the emotions, we can change the behavior. If we can change the behavior, then we can change the relationship. I'm a counselor. Most times when people come for counseling, 95% of counseling cases, whether it is relationship, whether it is business, every, in governance, it begins in relationship. Every problem in life, look at it thoroughly, is a relationship problem, a relational problem somewhere. So if we're going to have a place where people are healthy, where the society is a great place, let's look at our behaviors towards the family. And then the behavior is changed by the core values, what we truly believe when something happens. So I want to read a scripture for you, like I said. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 28. New Living Translation. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. But if you do get married, it is not a sin. If a young woman gets married, it is not a sin. However, those who get married at this time will have troubles. I'm trying to spare you those problems. Bring it in message by me. But there is certainly no sin in getting married. Whether you're a virgin or not, all I'm saying is that when you marry, you take on additional stress in an, or, in an already stressful time. I want to spare you if possible. See, boys don't marry. Girls don't marry. It is men that marry. Life itself is already stressful. Coronavirus, SARS, and SARS. I can go on and on. Political nonsense. Every day, just put on your TV. 
to say, ah, they have kidnapped this person. This has happened. This has happened. Life itself is stress. I thank Reverend Father. Reverend Father decided I won't marry. It's from day one. I don't want trouble. I was training to be a reverend sister. I have done the work of God as someone who was not married. I have also now, I'm now doing the work of God with husband, with family, with children, and then with pastoring church. The two are not the same. Reverend Father, some of the problems I have, Reverend Father, Reverend Sister, I don't have them. Marriage in itself is stressful. So it's not something you just wake up and say, oh, all my, oh, my age mates are married. Marriage is not age, age mate competition. It is not age grade. Oh, yeah, this age grade. Oh, yeah, marry. Oh, yeah, this age grade. It is not, I am now, I'm, I, I, I have reached the stage of bearing children. Look at us. Some of us, your children are looking at you and they are wondering how did you become my father or my mother? Because they look at their behavior. They look at your own. They see it's the same. See, I came today angry. Oh. I came today angry. You know what is annoying me? Christians don't behave like Christians. You see a Christian, a Christian husband and you see an unbeliever husband. The only difference is that Christian man enters church. Nothing else. There is really not a lot of difference. You see a Christian woman. You see a Christian, uh, 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 an unbelieving woman. The difference is not, is there's not a lot of difference. They insult their husband like we insult our own. They have not, it's just the same behavior. And I'm asking myself, Christian is not supposed to be like this. We are Christian, so. We are Christian men. We are Christian women. We are supposed to be different from the world. Their interaction and our own is not supposed to be the same. That is my annoyance. It didn't start today. This annoyance didn't start today. I will look at someone and say, I've been born again for 13 years. I've been looking for the 13 years in your behavior. Just as someone was telling me, say, you see, I'm a very strong believer. I'm, 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 very, I'm very strong. I said, no. A mark of a strong believer is not how long you pray. It's not how many signs and wonders you do. Because native doctors can do the same. A native doctor can look at you and tell you your life history. A mark of a true believer is fruits of the Holy Spirit. If, listen, how many fruits of the Holy Spirit are we seeing in your life? There are behaviors, now that you are married, there are behaviors that should not be a bad, because you are a Christian. You are Jesus' sibling. So let's pick, begin to pick them one after the other. The first un unhealthy behavior Looking outside your marriage for something that is lacking within your marriage. You married your wife. What you're looking for in a woman, you have found 65% in her. You married your husband, you have found 70% in him. You now have five side chicken or five side cock that. 10% of the thing is in this one. 10% is in, So you, a human being created by God, that reads the Bible, pretty, speaks in tongues. You stand. Fight for that human being stand. What is inside you is inside them. You are sleeping with them in this world that we are. Mbanana, I'm going walk. Because anybody you sleep with, your soul and the person's soul will tie together. So you are one person. Five different people. So you are actually six people. So you say, I want a slim woman. My wife is not slim. So you borrow a slim side cheek and you put by your side. He said, I want a man with broad shoulder. My husband's brother is not, shoulder is not broad. His shoulder is square. So you now borrow a square boyfriend and put by your side. Come on. I watched a movie many years ago. It's called Little Mermaid. I loved the the soundtrack. The seaweed is always greener in someone else's lake. You dream about going up there, but that's a big mistake. Just look at the world around you. Right here on the ocean floor, such wonderful things around you, what more are you looking for? The seaweeds are always greener in someone else's field. Your friend is telling you now, 
I can't, if my husband behaves like this, I will shoot, I will, I will fire. If what they are tolerating, what they, they, nobody can tell you what they are tolerating. Whenever you see, you stay here, you look at the weeds around you, it's not as green, it's yellow. You look up. You say that one in Okonkwo's house is greener than this, my own. I want to go and get that one. You don't know that the thing you are seeing green, it is Photoshop. Under it is roses. And where you see roses, there are tongues. You take the rose. I know the tongue will turn you. It's an unhealthy behavior, sir. If you look now, look you back. It's an unhealthy behavior to be looking outside. The thing you can't find, fix it. Friends, there is no perfect person in this world. Including me, Pastor K, that is talking to you. If you know what my husband himself is enduring, if you know what I myself am enduring it, there is even God created the world and regretted that he created it. You can't find any perfect person anywhere. That's why when you want to marry, give check here. You will check it. You will check it. You will check. Is this what I want to go into? There's no perfect person. Say there's no perfect person. Touch yourself. Say I'm not perfect. Say stop pretending you're perfect. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The reason why we have a lot of challenges in marriage, sir, is because you always keep pointing at me. I'm the one that needs to make all the changes. I'm the one that did that. I'm the one that did that. I'm the one that did that. Improvement and change is one person at a time. You face yourself. Where do I need to make improvement? The goal is that I have to be a better person. To be a blessing for my wife and for my children. Which improvement do I need? I'm a Christian. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, are they being found in my life? Are they, do I see patience? I stopped boasting about how spiritual I am. When my children brought their children. All of them were teenagers. There were about 20 teenagers in my house. And I said, ah, bedtime in this house is 9 o'clock. They said, yes, ma'am, we heard you. I went to bed. I came out 15 minutes after. I hear, the moment I opened the door, everybody was sleeping. I said, am I, is this a dream? Am I in a dream now? I went, as I go, they, I said, I thought I said to you people, bedtime is 9 o'clock. He said, sorry, ma'am, sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. So, bedtime is still 9 o'clock. I went in. Came out again. These children are doing something else. I, now, I, I, don't, I, I don't quarrel with Moses anymore. You know, I used to quarrel with Moses. Moses, how can God write something and give you? And then you go and destroy it. Ah, what kind of man are you? I now understand what Moses felt. Those children did that thing to me. I didn't know whether to slap them or to just carry all of them and stone on the wall. I now understood Moses' predicament. After Moses showed these people God and said they have seen God, they have heard him, they have seen smoke, they have seen mountain, they, they saw mountain shake. So anything God tells them. So Moses went to pray. By the time he came back, the thing he brought from God, he looked at, ah, is this a film? He just took the thing and smashed it. God said, Moses, see this thing you smashed? You will carry it. But you will carve it by yourself. The two stones, you will carve it by yourself. You will climb the mountain with it. I will write on it. You will bring down the stone back. I understood patience. Nobody is perfect. You can't find anybody that is perfect on earth. In my place, they sing a song. Who is a wonderful, nice person? He said, we can't find one. So what you're looking for, what you're looking for in Sokoto, what should you do? What is a healthy behavior that we should take? Healthy behavior, leave and cleave. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and two of them shall be one flesh. I want to talk about this a bit. It is a mistake for you to think that in marriage that the universal principle will not hold. It is a mistake. There is a universal principle I want you to see. Once you say no to one thing, get ready to say yes to another thing. So when you said no to idol worship, you have said yes to Jesus. You said yes to Christianity, you have said no to carnality. There is nothing like carnal Christians. 
is either you're a Christian or you're not. Now, there is nothing like Igbo Christian. There's nothing like Bini Christian. It is we are Christians. Who are Christians? People who use the Bible worldview to live their lives. Our mindset, our disposition, our relational skill, our understanding, our emotions, our heart is Bible. And how do we imbibe it? By reading it. You can't carry Bible if you don't read. Once you say yes to one thing, you have said no to another. It's a, it's a universal principle. You live to cling. It is dangerous to assume that a marriage, you can keep hanging out with the same kind of people the way things used to be. Very dangerous. Marriage must change you. When I say I do, I have also said I don't. If you say I do and I will, you have also said I don't and I won't. That's whether you said it in the courtroom or you said it in the church. You are a Christian. Oh, don't forget this. Don't forget this fact. I'm talking to Christians. I'm not talking to idol worshippers. This is not a local temple. Everybody that came here believe in God. That's why you're, even if you're not a born again, but you believe in God. If you ever said yes to your spouse at the altar or in the church or anywhere you went to say this, I do. What you have said is I'm saying yes to a happy, wonderful home. What you have said is that you are saying no to some former ties that are unhealthy. For instance, casual flirting. What is a young man calling a young girl by 2 a.m. or 2.30? Say, BC, how are you? Is daddy, is daddy, is daddy. Have you eaten? BC, have you eaten? What did you eat? What time did you eat? And when the girl is running after, he say, I, I didn't say anything to her. I was, it's just harmless, harmless phone call. Harmless phone call by 2 a.m. Ain't that guy who in the morning could call the person? You know what it means to flat? Flat means you are doing something towards the person, it is tickling the person's emotion, but it's, you are, you, it's amusement, you don't mean it. It's called casual flirting. Then you're sending tests. The, the test is heavy. The test is heavy, the test is speaking in tongues. The text is anointed. Her emotions will fly. Her emotions, her, uh, the way you are shaking your eye. I'm suspecting this movie. Suspecting it. Everybody here, we have to stop letting. We have to. We are Christ. I'm talking to you like because I know you're a Christian. If you're a native doctor, I won't talk to you like this. If this is not church, I won't talk to you like this. I'm a, I'm a pastor. I should tell you the truth. You behave as though you are attracted to or trying to attract someone to yourself. But it's not, you're not serious about it. Not serious. You see some girls, they will sit down before someone, then they will assume a posture that the man will just look at you, look at you, just looking at you. Your body goes scatter. He said, no, I, I didn't mean it. It's not my fault that the body scatter. It's not my fault. You come to church, you dress, when you finish dressing, we're confused. When they say everybody lift up their hands, brother, beside you lift like this, he will see, he will see headlight. <laughs> he won't know whether to put hand in front. Lay, you go to hell if you continue like that. <laughs> the brother doesn't know whether to, to face left front now or to face left front. So, so, so the brother will just start speaking in tongues. <laughs> what he say, God, please just help me, help me, help me. How did ushers put me in this place? Every woman must know how your body is built. There are some of us, your boot is well, well designed. You have V boot. There are some of us, you have U boot. You must wear a. Oh God. Some of us, yeah, we are Christians. Once you say yes, you must come back and say, I give up to casual flirting. There are some relationships that you must give up. There are some friends you must give up. There are some hangouts that is not for you anymore. Because it will destroy the sanity of your children. When you go to those places, you hear things and then your own Christianity, your, your soul has not been transformed. You carry those things at home, you behave them to your children. 
Your children believe in you and they believe that God will use you to transform their lives. Your children see you as God, I hope you know. Your children trust you. Your children believe that you won't lead them astray. They believe that you'll be there for them. I am a therapist. When we do inner healing for children, even you, you'll be weeping. Parents do not understand the impact of their, the impact of our misbehavior to our children. When you sit down sometimes and talk to children, you are crying. When we have said yes, we have said yes. Someone said, this thing was said on Oprah TV. We are reproducing generations and multitudes of messed up people because we are not learning how to do marriage well. There's something to learn. There's something to do differently. I want to show you these statistics. 77% of men who cheat on their wives have best friends who also cheated on their wives. Uh, it's, it's a statistic from Oprah TV, not a Christian. Meanwhile, a surveyed group of men who were faithful to their wives said less than 50% of their friends cheated in their marriages. When you cheat in your marriage, you are destroying the lives of your children. Because there's going to be a so tie between you and a total stranger. But that, that's, that's not what I'm talking about today. Statistics. Nearly 50% of marriages end up in divorce. 60 to 70 people who separate don't divorce but never come back together. So children are exhausted because of our behaviors. Because they are the ones soaking it up. Children are the ones soaking it up. They can't shout on us. They can't quarrel with us. We, they don't have power. They are helpless. They are at our mercy. And we are the adults. We have all the power. Can we do? Can we do marriage differently? We are Christians. We are supposed to teach people who don't go to church how, what this is. I always tell my young men at home, I say to them, see, if you have money, the unbeliever will not be shocked because they have. Even if they don't have, they will do 19 and a half. If you build houses, they are not shocked. But you know what will shock them? How are you able to do it with all your influence, with all your power? You don't do women. Same for women. Talking, if what I say to one, I say to others. We are not shocked. In fact, we are shocked when you are a married person and you're responsible. We are shocked. We tell ourselves you're hiding something. What I said to my husband, I said, see, we have been married for 20 years. I have never received seen test message mistakenly. He said that you are deleting it before. See, what is happening? I said, come, let us. You, haven't, have never, you are not hiding your phone. You are not mistakenly. Even when I say, let me even touch light you, I can't. For what is happening? You know what he said to me? He said, if I'm responsible in marriage, I'm not responsible for you. I'm responsible because of God. Because I will give account to God what I did with her princess, with his princess. And I rested my case. In most cases, you become like people you hang out with. The Bible always be right, sir. He said, he that walketh with the wise will be wise. A company of fools will be destroyed. If you want to have a great life, Hang up with people who have great lives. And listen, great life is not just one. It's not just physical. Life is spirit, soul, and body. Someone who is solid in the soul. Someone, I'm not asking you to look for the perfect person. Look for someone that believes the Bible, that the Bible is speaking the truth. Action plan, what is my giveaway to you today? I'm not asking you to alienate with your friends. But I'm asking you to do this. We don't have to think about the things our friends are thinking about. We don't, let, we don't have to let our mind drift into areas where it doesn't belong. We are Christians. I will continue to say that. We are Christians. Because we are Christians, our demands is different from their demands. Listen, someone who is worshipping Ayelala is faithful to the thing. Faithful. Who is serving um, Oromela is faithful to the thing. Christians, if we are serving Jesus, we have to be faithful to Jesus. That's my submission. So what will you do? What should I tell? What am I asking you to do? You have to fireproof your, your mind with the word of God. You have to let the word of God safeguard your mind. Listen, there are worldly influences infiltrating our lives. 
The marriage standard has just been so reduced that several things are infiltrating our thoughts, infiltrating our core values have been so damaged. Our thinking warped. Our emotions strangled. And so our is showing our behaviors. I hope you know that sometimes your children discuss you with themselves. They discuss you with their friends. They discuss you with their teachers. Don't think they are not seeing I said to them, I shared a story with them at the first service, which I will share with us very shortly. What am I telling you to do? Make a plan that will work. Where there is no vision, the people perish. What is your vision for your family? The vision of Fem Foundation is curing desert places, raising men and women who will cure desert places. 12 years down the line, 20 years down the line, what do you see your children becoming? I'm not asking you the school you sent to them. I'm not asking where they went to vacation. I'm talking about the person, the, if this child gets married, will the wife look back and always bless you for the kind of core values you instilled in them? You must create a vision. Your family must have vision statement for crying out loud. Your business has vision statement. Your career has vision statement. How many years did you learn to, did you spend studying law? Six years. What you're going to do all your life, you don't have any studies on it. You're going to be a father and a mother all your life. If you be father, father-in-law, grandfather, great-grandfather, until God takes you from here, you will retire from everything you do. You see this thing I'm doing? After some time, I'll retire. Whether you like it or not, speak out. Well, after some time, you won't be speaking anymore. Same with governor, same with president, same with everyone, same with engineers here. You will never stop being a father. So you must work at it and know how to do it well. We must create plans to continue to improve every day. Because you have something to give to your children. The legacy you give to your children is not just the, 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 the properties you send to them. I was telling my son about a man, a woman. This is personal story. He willed a lot of properties to his children. Before he died, the children had sold about 17. After he died, the remaining one, they stood together. When they were going to say, I was begging them, don't say this, don't say this. Eventually, they sold it for peanuts. Ten years after, the person that bought the property to them still shedding tears. But now they have none. And I said to my son, no matter what we put in your hands, the greatest thing you're going to hold are the values we instill inside you. Because if the values are not there, Hey, they will, edit, they will sell it out. And how do you show children values? You model it. Forget what you say. They look at how you live. Third point. Healthy behavior. Some of us are getting married now. They are not ready. Uh, so, um, Felix, huh, when we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. If you see the stupidity I did during my I had 52, 52 people were the people that, my wedding party was 52. 52 brother chain. My husband stood here for almost 40 minutes waiting for my brother chain to finish. It's my foolishness I'm sharing with you. Waiting. Thank God I'm son who is special. I'm sure nobody would have said, what nonsense is this? We'll just go. Living Your Dreams Initiative presents Unbroken, an emotional healing conference. Three red bags plus two equals what? Date 11th to 13th February 2022. Sixth day, which is Friday, 2 p.m. Seventh day, which is Saturday, 9 a.m. And first day, which is Sunday, 9 a.m. Venue, Festus EIE Hall, opposite Hall 1, University of Benin, Benin City. Powered by Firm Foundation, Secure the Future Initiative, and ASSRT. Be strong. What does it mean to be strong when the heart aches and there is no hope in sight? When holding back tears no longer helps? When the road is rough and it weighs you down? How do we stay strong? Stay strong in community because there is a better life in needing others. Though our lives may not be perfect, and we can't promise you there will be days without the dark clouds, but we can promise to be there 
when it rains and when it hurts. We will be there with you when all seems bleak. We will guide you to wholeness. We are living your dreams.